Okay, sorry. So, hello everybody. Um, I'm Olivier Fonan. I work for Red Hat in the uh, graphics subsystem team, and part of my job is to try to m help things working on Wayland. Um, so, um, what what accessibility feature are we talking here? I'm not. I'm really not an accessible an expert on accessibility. When we were uh, considering switching to Wayland by default for Fedora, we had that long list of features, the, the gaps between X and Wayland, and accessibility was part of it. Um, and so I tried to help. So I contributed the keyboard accessibility, the mouse accessibility. And if we have time, I'd like to uh, just mention Ponytail and the, uh, its relationship with, with accessibility. Um, so, um, those features on X, they usually use uh, mechanisms like being able to grab the device and inject fake events or position a window on screen and all of this is impossible on on Wayland and that's by design it's not it's it's not that it it's it, we want it like that and besides I don't know if how familiar you are with Wayland but just so that everybody is aware um, with Wayland the Wayland compositor is a display server Xorg is not the display server anymore. So anything that is implemented in the Xorg server is not available on Wayland, and you have to implement the same within your Wayland compositor. And that that applies to the accessibility features as well. So without being able to listen to device events or to uh, inject fake events or to position a window on screen wherever it wants, the Wayland clients are not able to implement that as an external feature. Um, and X Wayland is, is, won't help here as well either because um, X Wayland is basically a Wayland client. It doesn't have any control over the devices, so it cannot inject events either. It's just, it just a mix server for the X11 clients, and a, but a, merely a Wayland client like the others for, for Wayland itself. So that explains why all the um, tools that we were using to implement those features on X would completely fail on Wayland. Um, So um, I'll start with keyboard accessibility features. Those, those are not exactly new because they've landed during the 328 time frame. Uh, but I'm going to talk about it because it's part of accessibility. And, and actually, it, not everybody knows that it's implemented. So it's, I think it's, it's good to mention that here. So what is accessibility, keyboard accessibility? So it's slow keys. Basically, you have to keep the key pressed for a certain amount of time before it gets triggered. So that's for people who just, you know, if you type too fast, that's not for you. Um, there's bounce keys, which is uh, you, if it's, it's, if you click, if you type the same key twice within a certain amount of time, the second one is ignored. It's like, you know, you have to type very slowly so that you don't mistype characters. Um, then you have sticky keys, which is for modifiers, which basically mean that uh, your usual shift or control key acts as a, if you press it, it's going to affect the next key press rather than having to press two, two keys at the same time, which can be challenging for uh, accessibility. And there's toggle keys, which is basically emitting a sound uh, whenever those modifiers changes. I, I got that completely wrong when I first implemented because I thought it was the, it was about the ability to uh, uh, switch the feature on and off from the keyboard. But you know that that proves how 
well I knew about accessibility initially. And finally, you have mouse keys, uh, which is the ability to control the pointer and click using the uh, numeric keypad on your keyboard. So initially, uh, Matthias had an implementation of that client side in GTK. Um, and that, that was a perfectly valid approach because we like um, key repeats in Wayland is handled on the client side as well. So we could have that in the um, in the client side, but the, let's put that let's put it that way. The repeat key has been challenging because if the compositor doesn't forward the release early enough, you start repeating keys that you're not expecting. Uh, also, the mouse keys would be impossible to implement uh, in the on the client side either because mouse keys basically you get. Um, keyboard events, and yet you, then you generate uh, fake pointer events, and that's not possible on Wayland. Not even on the, I mean, even less on the client side. Um, so I thought the best way to do it would be to do it directly into the Wayland compositor, just like it's done on X, basically, because all that is done in in, in X with um, Access X. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically, I forgot to switch. Um, so, yes, as I said, uh, on, X, on Access 6, on X, it's using Access 6. So, the um, way I added that is to put it directly in the main Wayland loop um, dealing with uh, events so that it will work with Wayland clients because that those events get forwarded to the Wayland clients and work with the shell itself because we want all that to be working on the shell and not just for Wayland clients or X clients. Um, and because I wanted to have accessibility implemented in, in one single place, uh, that was, so on X, we still use Access X, obviously, because it's very precise, but uh, we configure it from Mata uh, from the uh, the X11 backend, and the reason I've because we moved the backends b between the time uh, I uh, wrote those slides because now the clutter backends input backends are moved. That's why I changed that to SRC backends X11. Um, so um, the those accessibility features they also poke into the UI because. You can control, you can enable and disable some features using the keyboard, like pressing five times the shift key um, uh, quickly or keeping the shift key pressed for more than eight seconds. That would enable uh, slow keys uh, and uh, sticky keys. Um, so we want to be able to show a dialog whenever that state changes. Uh, so previously that was done in GNOME, uh, GNOME settings daemon that would uh, map the dialog. Uh, but now that we have it in, in, in uh, Mata, the best place to put it would be in GNOME shell. So basically the lower layers need to communicate to the highest level uh, the, uh, that state change. So for that I use a new um, uh, signal on the uh, Clutter Device Manager so that basically uh, GNOME shall just listen to that event and so that signal and whenever it changes it just looks at the field that changed in the configuration and show the right uh, dialog and that that works pretty well and so yeah I'm not going to show that because it's not I mean Sticky, I mean, keyboard accessibility doesn't have any fancy animation or anything, so I'm not going to show that. On the mouse side of things, uh, there, I put it under, uh, that should read mouse accessibility so much for rereading, proofreading slides, sorry. Uh, so, from mouse accessibility, we have simulated secondary click, which is you click using the um, left mouse button, you keep it pressed for a certain amount of time, and after the timeout, it simulates a right click. This is um, hover click, like 
it's the ability to um, generate click events uh, by just leaving your pointer at some place without moving. You would have a timeout and it would trigger a click. And the type of click depends on, uh, is, is you have to select the type of click first. And I've put the uh, pointer location in that category as well, even though it's not strictly an accessibility features, but that uh, also relates to accessibility in the sense that that helps you uh, find your pointer on screen. So, um, click assist, as it is called, is uh, that ability to uh, generate events by um, leaving your pointer standing at the same place for some amount of time. The original implementation on X uh, was using a um, separate dialog. Um, so, I need to speed up a bit. So, uh, that was the um, the old implementation was, the timeout was um, uh, represented by recoloring the pointer and that doesn't work well depending on your theme because if you have a dark pointer as we do in Fedora, uh, you hardly ever see the animation playing. Uh, and that, that dialog box also uh, stands uh, on top of all other windows and take a bit of screen estate. So you, if you want to click on something underneath, you have to first select drag, then move it, and then go back and click. So my, my feeling was that there was a lot of room for improvement there. So it was good that, you know, moving it to Wayland was a good opportunity to uh, improve things as well. Um, so the the Moving it to GNOME Shell and Mata would allow to that to work for both X11 and Wayland, so we would not use that daemon anymore. Uh, so the, the, one of the challenges is to be able to detect whenever the, the what we detect movement, but we detect we want to detect when it stops moving. It, it's a bit harder, so it's using a lot of timeouts all over in different places. Um, for X11, that was a bit challenging because we want to receive uh, motion events even if another client has an active grab on the pointer. And, and also because if you're on X11, if you're using client-side decorations, the, uh, the, the event goes directly to the client and they do not go through the uh, uh, clutter uh, stage or something. So Clutter itself doesn't see those motion events. So the way to achieve that was to switch to um, row events on X11. Uh, and that, that works well. Uh, but you know, row events are just what it says. It's, it doesn't give you the actual pointer location. So any, any time we receive a row event on X11, we have to query the pointer, which means that a round trip to the X server, which can be time consuming, so again, those are throttles that, so that we don't query the, the pointer too often. Try to save a bit of power there. Um, and there's a less known fact is the original implementation on X11 had a gesture mode where you would, uh, the, first, the first timeout would not uh, emit the click yet, but then you would have a second timeout where you can Depending on the direction you, you move your pointer, it would, it would generate a different type of click, like the left click, the right click, the double click, or even initiate a drag. So we have that now even in the Wayland, I mean, in the common Wayland and X11 implementation, um, and that works well. And on the UI side of things, uh, that recoloring of the pointer was not um, really nice. So um, I, I really like the idea of a Pi timer, something that would uh, turn around your pointer showing the timeout running so you can easily see when, you, when you're going to generate the click and move if you don't want it. Um, but I'm no JavaScript expert and uh, that proved to be an interesting thing to do, but well, it works and obviously there was bugs and other people fixed it for me. So. That's great. Um, uh, even even now, that we actually there's patches pending, which are really nice because once the uh, timeout ends and you generate a click, there's a nice and oops, sorry, the nice 
pop up an animation that, that shows that the click really occurred, as opposed to when you move before it occurred, that click is cancelled. So that's, that's pending. There's a little glitch that I would like to see fixed before we merge it. I still hope that we have the time before um, 3.34. We'll see. But right now it works and, and works well. So let's see if I can run a demo of that. Sorry. Missed. Ah, can't even type my name. So now I'm starting a Wayland session. Hopefully it will work. Finger crossed. Oh, it's not dead yet. <laughs> it takes a while to start. I think it's, it's... I should have started before, but... Yeah, here we go. So, um, let's do that. Oh, quick demo. So the um, accessibility features, they are to be found in the Univol Access here. So it, it's been hard for me because I don't really see the screen. So I'll try to do that. Um, so this is under click, oops, sorry. This is under click assist here. So this is the uh, Sangha Direct Click thingy. So here I'm going to click with the uh, regular left mouse button and you see the animation going and then that generates a right click button. So that's quite nice. The other thing is, sorry, the hover click that I was talking about. So basically whenever you stop moving, it starts. If you move, it waits. So. Okay, let me do something because there's something I forgot to mention. Uh, because the the thing is, you remember that ugly, oh, I mean, that dialog box. Oh, that's another thing is whenever you forget, it clicks. <laughs> so let me make this my primary display so you can see. Yes, here it is. Okay, so now it's using a dedicated menu here. So you just click, and from there you can select the type of click, and that will affect the next click. So you're basically moving here, and when you're done, it just like that. The same applies. So I'm not clicking anywhere. I'm just using the feature like that then move to your destination, wait for the time I to run, and you get the events. Okay? So, so I think some people mentioned that using the menu requires an additional click, which is right because you have to click. But on the other hand, it removes a lot of clutter and leaves the entire screen for your applications, which is kind of important, I think. Uh, if we ever wanted to have all the features, uh, all the click types available, we would have to move all the uh, four types of clicks in the panel, which would work as well, but add a bit of clutter. So I kind of like the current implementation. If somebody really feels strongly about it, could change that. So um, do I have a bit of time? So back to the uh, thing. So point allocation, um, it was handled, so, okay, I, really quick. So it was the same with, as with um, 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 click assist. It was handled by a separate daemon, which would be sorted uh, whenever the feature is, is enabled. That feature is actually not in the main settings dialog. It's, it's in the um, GNOME tweaks. Um, and it would it would listen to mass events and Mac, uh, window showing the animation, and that doesn't work on Wayland. So, same thing. We moved it to. Um, we sorry. So the the thing is still clicking. <laughs> uh, let me turn it off real quick. Here it is. Uh,
en del. It's gone. Oh, uh, one thing to notice is whenever you switch it off, the menu disappears because you don't need it anymore. So um, GNOME tweaks. Ah, quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick, quick. So the um, map, um, the point allocation, it's available here in GNOME Tweaks, and that basically allows you to show a nice animation whenever you click on your control key. Um, okay. <laughs> so that works now in both X and Wayland. That was the point. And okay, that's the end of the time. Do we have time for, no. <laughs> okay, I'm done, <laughs> sorry. <laughs>